Mom, I don't want to make my video today. It's Friday. I want to go out and play. Fine. Gosh. Hi. Teach me, Mr. P. Chapter 7, Lesson 8. We're adding mixed numbers, and we're subtracting mixed numbers. We're adding and we're subtracting mixed numbers. If I got to do it, you got to do it. Gosh. I want to go out and play. It's not fair. All right, let's get this done so I can go out and play with my friends. Let's take a look at something here. Let's say, for example, I have two and one third. I have two full pizzas and one third of another pizza. Let me draw my pizzas for you so you can see what I'm talking about. Here's one pizza, two pizzas, I'm going to draw three pizzas because I have two whole pizzas and a little bit of another one. All right. So my pizzas are cut into thirds. All of my pizzas are cut into thirds. They're delicious pepperoni pizzas. And they're all cut into thirds. Three equal pieces each. Now, I already have two whole pizzas. I have that whole pizza. I have that whole pizza. And I have one third of that pizza. I have two and one-third pizzas. But let's say my friend comes over. Let's say little Jimmy's coming over. Let's say I go to little Jimmy's house and he also has pizza. Why wouldn't he have pizza? Everybody has pizza, all right? So I have this much pizza. I go to little Jimmy's house and little Jimmy has one pizza and two-thirds of another. Let's draw how many pizzas little Jimmy has. Little Jimmy has one whole pizza and a little bit of another. His pizzas are also cut into thirds. He has this whole pizza, that's one, and two thirds of another pizza. What if, when I go to little Jimmy's house tonight, what if I took my pizza over to his house and we took our pizzas and we added them together? What if I took two and one third and I added it to one and two thirds? How much pizza would I have? How much pizza would we have, little Jimmy and me? How much pizza would we have? Well, let's take a look here. I have two and one third. He has one and two thirds. We have to add these together. So the first thing, let's rewrite this so that there's not a whole bunch of stuff in between the numbers. All right, so two and one third plus one and two thirds. The first thing I always, 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 always want to check always want to check, always want to check first when I'm adding or subtracting fractions. I always want to check if my denominators are the same. Let's take a look. I have a denominator of 3. I have another denominator of 3. Are they the same? Very good. Yes, they are. 3 and 3 are the same. Excellent. So once I check that, everything else is simple, easy. The first thing I'm going to do is add my whole numbers. I have 2 and I have 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. Very good. Now, since my denominators are the same, which we've already established, they're the same, we figured that out already, all I have to do now is keep that the same. I have a 3, I have a 3, keep it a 3. Don't change it. Keep it the same. Now I can just add my numerators. 1 plus 2 equals 3. So far, so good. Little Jimmy and me, myself, we have three whole pizzas and three out of three pieces of another one. That sounds kind of strange. Let me draw a picture of that and show you what that really means. This means I have this pizza, this pizza, this pizza, and that pizza. Now, they're all still cut into thirds. Don't forget that. They're all still cut into thirds. And I have three of them. I have three holes. I have that one. I have that one. I have that one. And then I have three thirds. So I have three pieces out of this pizza. I have this piece. I have this piece. And I have that piece. Well, wait a second. If I have three thirds of that pizza, how much do I really have? I really have one extra hole. So I have this whole pizza, this whole pizza, that whole pizza, and that's a fourth pizza. Well, let's look back at our fractions. I have 3 and 3 over 3. Anytime you have the numerator and the denominator 
as the same number, that equals one. So this is like I'm saying I have three whole pizzas and one whole pizza. Hmm. If I have three and one, how much pizzas, how many pizzas do I really have? I have four. Yes, four pizzas. So when I go to little Jimmy's house right now, after I finish my homework and I go to little Jimmy's house and I bring my pizza over there and he gives, gives me his pizza, we're going to have four whole pizzas to share. Gosh, I can't wait. I love pizza. All right. Now, if you were to subtract these things, everything would still be the same. The only difference is you would have to put a subtraction sign right there. All right. Let's flip this over. Let's try one. All right. Let's say... I have four and one fourth pizzas. I like pizzas. Gosh, I can't wait to go to Jimmy's house and eat some pizza. All right, so I have four and one fourth pizzas now. And little Jimmy has one and one eighth of a pizza. And I want to know how much more pizza I have than little Jimmy. I want to know how much more I have. So since I want to know how much more, or how many more, or however more you want to say it, I'm going to subtract. Because if I take my pizza and subtract what he has, I'll know how much pizza I have more than him. I'll know that. All right? Because whatever the answer is, that's going to be how much pizza I have more than he, than he does. And I definitely have more than him. Now, remember, the first thing you always want to check, you always want to check, you always want to check. The first thing you always want to check are the denominators the same? Hmm. I have a 4 as a denominator, and I have an 8 as a denominator. What? They're different. Oh, man. All right. Well, they're different. Not a big deal. I can work around this. If you remember how to find common denominators, this is going to be a breeze. If you don't, you could check back. I believe it's Chapter 7, Lesson 1. I'll put a link to it. Chapter 7, Lesson 1 will show you how to find the common denominators of these two fractions. But for now, we're going to assume you know how to find them and you know what they are. So let's do that. Let's make these two fractions have a common denominator. Well, just looking at them, I can notice and I recognize that 4 and 8, the best common denominator to use would be 8. Because I can make that 4 into an 8 by multiplying, and that 8 is already an 8. So let's drop these down. Let's rewrite them with denominators of 8. I'm going to keep my whole number the same. 1 and 1. And we're subtracting. All right. Now I have to figure out what my numerators are going to be. My new numerators. They're new. And I ask myself, what did I do to this 4, multiplying wise, to give me that 8? I multiplied it by 2. I took this 4 and I multiplied it by 2. Now if you remember, as long as I do the same thing to the top and the bottom, my fractions will be equivalent or equal. So since I multiplied the denominator by 2, I also have to multiply the numerator by 2. So I have 4 times 2 equals 8. 1 times 2 equals 2. All right. Now, same thing. What did I do to this 8 to turn it into an 8? I didn't do anything. Ha! <laughs> Easy. Since I didn't do anything to the denominator, I don't do anything to the numerator, and I keep it the same, 1 and 1 eighth. Now, from here out, it's a breeze. Easy breezy. Work with your whole numbers first. I have 4 minus 1. That is 3. I keep my denominator the same. If it's an 8, it's an 8. Don't change it. It's an 8. Now, my numerators. I have 2 minus 1. That is 1. Can I reduce that? Can I rename it? Nope, I can't. That's as low as it'll go. So that is how you add and subtract mixed numbers. I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you back here on Monday. I am going out to play because I'm done. I finished my homework. Now I can play. Mom! Ma! I'm done! Yeah, I'm done. I finished it. I did it all. I showed him how to do it. I added and I subtracted. I did it all. Yes, I did it all. Can I go out and play? Little Jimmy has pizza. But I don't want to take the trash out.